on today's show, Bosch says it developed a breakthrough in reducing diesel emissions. BMW, Lexus, and Kia reveal new vehicles at the Beijing Auto Show, and I answer your questions in You Said It. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Bosch announced a major breakthrough today in reducing diesel emissions. Even more impressively, it uses existing components, so the technology is available immediately for automakers and will not add cost. Today, European emission regulations limit NOx emissions to only 168 milligrams per kilometer. In 2020, that drops to only 120 milligrams. But Bosch says, its breakthrough can achieve only 40 milligrams in city driving and only 13 milligrams overall. And here's how it works. Bosch is using advanced fuel injection, a new air management system, and an intelligent temperature management system. The air management system relies on a new way of handling EGR, or exhaust gas recirculation, and on a turbo that is optimized to spool up faster at launch. Bosch says the key is keeping EGR temperatures above 200 degrees Celsius. Typically, the EGR fails to reach those temperatures in city driving, especially in gridlock or stop-and-go driving. Bosch says the diesel engine has not yet reached its full potential and that it's working on applying artificial intelligence to make it even cleaner and more efficient. Bosch's CEO, Volkmar Denner, also calls for fuel economy and emissions testing to be done on the open road, what the company is calling real driving emissions. He also says that regulators should include all the emissions that go into producing fuel and into generating electricity so that consumers have a clearer idea of their true CO2 footprint. We here at AutoLine completely support this because consumers would then be aware that electric cars are not zero emission vehicles. In fact, we say it is unethical to call them zero emission vehicles. Moreover, we'd say that Denner is not going far enough. We need to include all the CO2 emissions that go into manufacturing cars and into recycling them. That will give consumers a true picture of their CO2 footprint when it comes to choosing the kind of car that they want to drive. Still to come, BMW, Lexus, and Kia take the wraps off new vehicles at the Beijing Auto Show. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Okay, over to the Beijing Show now. This is BMW's all-electric crossover called the Concept iX3. It features fifth-generation e-drive technology and a range of 400 kilometers. That's about 250 miles. Interestingly, its electric motor does not use rare earth metals. The production version will be built in China. Lexus took the wraps off its new ES. It's built on a new global architecture, and it's longer, lower, and wider than before. And for the first time, an F-Sport model is being added to the ES lineup. Two powertrains are available, a 3.5-liter V6 mated to an 8-speed automatic, and a hybrid powered by a 2.5-liter 4-cylinder, which gets an estimated 44 miles per gallon combined. It's also available with new safety and infotainment features. The new ES, though, does not go on sale until September of 2019. Kia unveiled two new vehicles for the Chinese market. First up is the Yipao, a small SUV that goes on sale in the second half of the year. The company didn't share any other details about it. And it revealed a plug-in hybrid called the K5 with a 2-liter gasoline engine, a 50-kilowatt electric motor, and a lithium-ion battery pack. The K5 goes into production in China in the second quarter of this year. Coming up next, it's time for You Said It. Okay, this is the part of the show where I get to answer some of your questions. And Kevin Anderson wants to know, do GM Ford FCA have any closed or grossly underutilized assembly plants? If so, 
Would it make sense for them to do contract assembly for the Tesla Model 3? Well, no, they don't have any plant like that, and no, they would not lift a finger to help Tesla. Tom in Ocracoke has an idea for V2V technology. I don't get the DSRC versus LTE battle. Seems to me that the right answer is both. Well, get this. Two systems means twice the cost. Better we pick one, and the only one ready right now is DSRC. Len Engler wants to know, how does the Pacifica plug-in compare to the others in percentage of sales? Man, that's a great question, Len. The plug-in Pacifica represents only 7% of sales. That compares to about 14% for the Prius plug-in and about 8% for the Volvo XC90. Oldsmo says, how the heck can you discuss whether EVs can catch on or not without bringing up the price of gas? It's all about that. It just doesn't pay at $3 a gallon. Oldsmo, that is a very American point of view. Gasoline costs $7 a gallon in Europe, and EVs are a very small percentage of sales over there. Keith Hamilton, question. Do car makers base their production numbers on a five or seven day work week? Tesla uses a seven day basis, which does not seem healthy. What about a proper work rest cycle and scheduled machine downtime for maintenance? Well, look, automakers base their production capacity on two eight hour shifts, five days a week. And you're right, if Tesla does not schedule enough downtime for maintenance, it's gonna run into problems. And you can only run your plants 24-7 for so long until your workforce burns out. Ego Equus says, Sandy should create a reality show called Factory Makeover, where he goes in like Gordon Ramsay of Kitchen Nightmares and whips them into shape. <laughs> Ego, that's a fantastic idea. A show like that would be an instant hit. By the way, that Autoline After Hours with Sandy last week is on track to have the highest viewership in the history of the show. Bloomberg News even did a piece on it, and it was picked up by Jalopnik and Inside EVs. And don't forget to join us for Autoline After Hours tomorrow, when we'll have the CEO of Mahindra North America with the Rockstar off-road vehicle that they're manufacturing in Michigan. Henry Payne from the Detroit News will be with us, sharing his on-track experience with the new Corvette ZR1. So join Gary Vasilash and me for some of the best inside info in the automotive industry. That wraps up today's report. Thank you for watching.